Okay, so here we are here. Here's the uh, deer cooler behind us. The, uh, like I said in, in my blog, I didn't explain too much. It's just a four by eight box. Uh, this is actually my buddy Kevin's cooler. I like to think of it as mine, but it's actually his cooler. I just got to help design it and the internal controls. But this is just a box with some cheap quarter inch plywood he got, real cheap. And uh, I donated the uh, R13 insulation to go into it. Our other buddy, Kevin, gave us this door. And uh, this little latch goes on it. Um, not much to it. Got a little thermostat I got off of Amazon years ago. I think Walmart has these two Accurite. And uh, this thing's been running for six or more years outside underneath the roof, but uh, this thing has not quit yet, batteries or anything, so amazing little thing. Um, I'm going to walk you inside here and show you how this thing works. Um, there's the door inside the box, uh, this little rail that we hang everything on, and uh, seems the box elder bugs are loving it too. Um, we're going to cover this all here shortly. Okay, this is the deer cooler. The inside is a deer cooler. This is the controls. This is a standard 120 volt air conditioner. And this here cord is wired in. It's just a regular extension cord with cut. And the black and the white wire wire goes in. And there's um, connections to the compressor here. There's a black and a white and a yellow. And um, I'm preface here, I'm not an air conditioning expert, but all the stuff I've touched in my house and other places, the yellow is the start for the compressor. And that's what I found on this one. So I took the black and the white and hooked it up. So it goes in here and I use the end of the cord here. So if the air conditioner goes bad, all we gotta do is unplug it, replace it, wire it back in and plug it back in. Everything doesn't need to come out. So, and then it goes into the ink part and it goes into an open contact on that. And it's open until like now, I think it's set for 39 degrees. And when this thing is turned on, it's actually closed now telling it to run if we turn this switch to uh, start the, run the air conditioner. And then it goes up through here and goes through a normally closed contact in here, which is monitoring this. And this opens the circuit to turn the air conditioner off if this gets well below freezing or it's like 30 degrees or something. So when this starts to ice up, this will kill the compressor. And this will still blow cold air and de-ice this. And once it gets up, I think, I can't remember we set it for like 28 degrees. And when it gets up an 8 degree difference, like 36 degrees, it'll close and, or something like that. So this thing's not frozen anymore. And then the contents, uh, compressor will come on and re-chill the cool uh, coil and start blowing cold air again. So, again, when this thing comes on, this... The circuit for the compressor runs through here on an open contact and when this is satisfied that it's cold enough it's it's closed when it's not cold enough and when it's satisfied it is cold enough it opens up turns the compressor off the circuit also runs through here closed and that's monitoring this and when this gets too cold it opens this contact turning the compressor off also so you have both of these. We ran this, when I first did this, my buddy Kevin said that he wanted to build a cooler and he came to me how to make it run because a cool bot was too expensive. Um, I figured out like this, this is gonna work. And it did work. It started off and then this coil froze. This thing overworked like crazy. It wound up tripping the circuit breaker when it was all iced up because it was just running and running and running and, running and it couldn't actually get the ice off of it. So. We had to add this later to make it work. Um, okay, so as we state again, 
This is just a normal air conditioner my buddy Kevin got off of Craigslist. I think he got it pretty cheap. This is just a standard 14 gauge, uh, not 14, it might be 16 gauge uh, extension cord because there's not that much current power running through it. This is the Inkbird ITC 1000. This is the Project Black Box. Um, this thing comes in really handy. You just cut a nice hole for it and have a little wire keeps it all in it. And this is the Johnson Controls Freeze Sensor. And uh, this video will have all the parts that I used linked underneath of it. It also has a link to my blog post for this, which has gotten pretty popular. There's a reason I made this video is because people keep asking me questions. So I wanted to try to get this out to get some of it. Now, some people have taken and used two of these. Now, I don't know whether you can fit two of these. You probably could fit two of these in a box if you really try to squeeze it in there because there's like a, two sides of it. And they're using one that's just hanging like here here's the temperature sensor it comes with a six foot temperature sensor and this is just hanging here so this is where it knows whether it needs to run or not and then they're taking the other one and putting the other one over here and using it in place of this because this is like i think twenty dollars and this is like fifty dollars but i wanted uh, a nice one like this so that's what we used so um I got some other videos going to be attached here where we used it, and uh, they'll play here shortly. Okay, bad lighting here, just because we're inside of a dark box. Um, but this is how we hang the deer. My buddy Kevin got this stuff, and this is just um, the angle iron that's got the holes in it, like you would use for garage doors. And that's put up here, and... Uh, and just you made a bracket for that and then there's uh like angle iron here and uh with his forge he just made some s hooks and we hang the uh gambrels on here uh, we have to come up with some kind of a hoist uh, i'll show you see it just runs down the length of here we have to come up with some kind of a hoist because as you're going to see here shortly i shot an eight point buck and that sound gun was heavy Man, it was all I could do to lift them up and try to ratchet them up. I literally had to make a, a loop, a pull strap, pull them up and cinch them up and cinch them up and cinch them up. Yeah, that was too much work. We're going to have to redesign something for that. Because uh, the problem is, the way it's made here, it's just, we couldn't make the roof any taller. So we're stuck with what we got. Uh, no microphone here, so just shot this buck this morning. It's 9.40 right now, and I just got this started up a minute ago. It was 55 degrees. And you can see the air conditioner is running. There's the cord that comes out that controls it. it. goes up into the ink bird, and the ink bird's already down to 50 degrees. We've got 5 degrees, so it gets down there 40 on the slowdown. And there's the uh, Jensen Controls thing that goes right there and controls the... Uh, make sure the coil doesn't freeze up. So. Gonna back out, let him cool down. As uh, my daughter said, I can't do it yet. I gotta get pictures holding them, so I can't do that by myself. So, anyway, back out, see you later, show you how it is. How cool it drives me. I'll come back around once. We're back at the deer cooler, it's almost four o'clock. I'm um, supposed to come back at lunchtime, but the wife had a new plan. She wanted to go to a small pub that we like to go to and get chicken wings and beer. And I had three IPAs, and I decided a nap was better, so. Smack me, you know? Here we go. It's back, and it's 39.2 degrees. A little latch on the free door that we got. And there we go. Everybody's nice and cool. Registering. Oops, can't close that all the way. Registering 40 degrees on the ink bird. It's not iced up at all, not even showing up. So everything seems to be running nice and smooth. And there's the temperature sensor. I just bumped hanging out for the ink bird. Oh, look, baby dog needs to check her deer out too. She loves it when I get deer. So.